While you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Hey, Shalom, Most High in Christ blesses Officer Simakaya with IUIC Chicago. As you can see on the incense holder, uh, we're going to bring, bring it to you a quick class on the good and bad of spirits. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it, straight to the point. Uh, go to Sirach chapter stuff. We're going to start out with Sirach chapter 31 and verse 27. I'm going to read 27 and 28. Because if you, if you don't know, spirits, what, what, what we often call spirits, strong drink, alcohol is called spirits. It has the label of spirits. When you used to drive past many liquor stores, the label on them is spirits. So we're going to go through that real quick. Go ahead, read that if you got it. It's the book of Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, chapter 32, 31, and verse 27. Wine is as good as life to a man, if it be drunk moderately. So the scriptures let us know that this is a good thing. So this is one of the good traits of wine. It says wine is good if you drink it moderately, meaning you, you know how to control your alcohol. You know how to, okay, I can handle one. If I, if I know my limit is three. Once I drink three, three uh, cups of alcohol, I'm out of it. You know how to control it. So drinking moderately would be, you know what? I'm going to drink one and I'm done. That's you wine drinking moderately. Read. What well, life is thin to a man that is without wine. For it was made to make men glad. So we understand that the good part of wine, you had a long day at work long week, whatever the case may be, you have a, a glass of wine, you have a little shot of strong drink, and that's it. That's, it, it. It helps relieve your stress a little bit. It's a temporary relief of stress. It's not a solution to any problems that you may have, but when you, you may have certain feasts, we have like we have new moons, we have different feast days, we come together, we enjoy one another, we, we may have a couple of drinks. That's what, that's what the wine that makes me and Mary, wine makes me and glad. Read. Verse 28, wine measurably drunk and in season. It says wine measurably drunk. Measurably, that's the key word. Measurably, you have to drink with measure. You have to know your limitations. My limitations may not be the same as another brother's limitations. Or a sister's, one sister's limitations on drinking some wine may not be the same as another sister's. You have to know what measure you're able to drink alcohol and have control over your actions and your thoughts and still be able to use discretion and discernment. Read. And in season. And it says, and in season. So that means that you don't drink, one. you're not supposed to drink every single day, all day. That's not what wine or strong drink is for. It says wine measurably drunk and in season. It's not meant to be drunken every day, all day. When you get up in the morning, before you go to work, and then before you, excuse me, when you get off work, you're drinking. You go on your lunch break, you're drinking. No, that's signs that you have a problem. Read. Bring of gladness to the heart and cheerfulness of the mind. So you have a long day of work. You got various stresses, whether it be bills, things that's going on that may be plaguing your mind. You can have you a glass of wine, maybe a shot of some strong drink, and it may ease your mind. It'll calm you down a little bit. You speak with your, you know, get on, you have a drink with your brother, whatever the case may be. But it's in measure, in moderation, that's, that's good. Because it'll ease your mind. It relaxes you a little bit. Uh, go to Proverbs chapter, no, go to 1 Timothy chapter 5 and 23. So we're going over some good things from drinking wine. And then, and then some of the things, you may you may live in a big city, Chicago, uh, what's some other, Los Angeles, New York, Atlanta, where you got your, your commute, you stay five miles away from your job, but because of traffic, it takes you 30, 45 minutes. That's a stress. You got to sit in the car, people cutting you off. That's a stretch. You get home after that, have you a glass of wine, that's going to relax you a little bit, make you a little bit merry, spending time with your rib, whatever the case may be, and you, you have some, you, it, it cheer you up. And that's, that's a temporary fix. And that's those light stresses. It's not a solution to your problems, like I said. Uh, read that in First Timothy. The book of First Timothy, chapter 5 and verse 23. Drink no longer water. But use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thy off infirmities. So it says, so we're going to deal with that first part. So it says, uh, read it again. 
Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake. So it says use a little wine for your stomach's sake. Pull up that article on um, from BBC News. We're just going to read like the first, first couple paragraphs. Okay. BBC News. Why red wine could be good for your gut in moderation. Notice that, that word again, in moderation. Don't be a wine or what you just drink. You got uh, uh, three, four bottles of wine and you just drinking them down, drinking them down, saying, oh, it's wine, make merry. No, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Read that. Red wine could be good for the gut, increasing the number of different types of healthful bacteria that can live there, according to researchers. The benefits are likely to come from Polyphenols. 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 Thank you. Compounds that white wine, beer, and cider have far less of. The King's College London team says, a glass, uh, a glass, a fortnight was enough to make a difference. But researchers say the findings are not an exclusive to binge. Not an excuse. Not an excuse. Excuse me. It helped me out with that word. Uh, polyphenols. Polyphenols are also found in many fruits and vegetables. Uh, read on. Why does it matter? Polyphen polyphenols. Polyphenols, such as res resveratrol in the skin of red grapes and micronutrients that are thought to have helpful health. Excuse me. Thought to have beneficial properties and act as a fuel for useful micro microbes living inside our bowels. How to eat your way to a healthy gut. You can skip those, okay. go to our guts. Okay, start at our guts. Our guts contain trillions of bacteria and other microorganisms, and this community of friendly bugs helps keep us healthy. A growing body of research suggests small changes to our microbiota can make us more susceptible to illness such as irritable bowel syndrome, heart disease, and obesity, and may even affect our mood and mental health. So that's it on that. So I just mainly went to it. So what this article says is that red, red wine helps your overall gut health. So that's when, when, when the scripture said, you know, go back to read that, 1 Timothy 5 and 23. This is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 23. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thy often infirmities. So drinking a little wine for your stomach hate, stomach's sake, it helps helps with your overall gut health in moderation. Not over, not just drinking bottle after bottle. You get off, you drink a whole bottle of red wine. And then the next day you drink a whole bottle of red wine. No, that's excess. You're drinking too much and you may harm, you may harm yourself. You may harm your, your digestive tract, your digestive system. So it says a little one. Then notice in the scripture, it says, it uses the, it says, uh, use a little wine for thy stomach's sake. Not a lot, not a whole bottle, not a whole couple bottles. Uh, what was that name of it? No, nah, that wasn't red wine. I'm thinking of something else. Mike Ziffidil? Uh, nah, no. Nah. Okay. I was going to say something else. Tripping. But. It says a little wine for thy stomach's sake, and then it says in thine often infirmities. Go over to Proverbs chapter thirty-one and verse six. So it says, "Use a little wine for thy stomach's sake, and thine often infirmities." Those often infirmities is going into, like I mentioned before, the various stresses that we have that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. We in a, we as Israel, the Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are in captivity. Every every day we Every day we, we wake up, we got to go to work. We have stresses at work, especially if you work in a customer service field. You got to deal with people. You got to drive to work, drive from work. All of those are stresses that will drive you crazy if you don't. Um, Proverbs 31 and 6. Okay. It drives you crazy if you don't. If you don't uh, first and foremost, the scriptures is what you need to calm yourself down. But when you drink wine moderately and in measure, it helps with those things. That's what we're going to see. Read. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 31 and verse 6. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. Uh-huh. And wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. So it says, give strong drink to him that is ready to perish. That's somebody that's in a deep depression. 
Not saying give it to him and so that he can drink and drink and drink and get drunk and forget his miseries. No, you don't. Well, I'm jumping ahead of myself, but not to the point where this person is drinking in excess. Now they getting drunk and they 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 solution. They think that the alcohol is going to be a solution to their problems. No, alcohol is alcohol, wine, strong drink. It's not going to be a solution to your problems. But temporarily, it can relieve those stresses. It gets your mind off of it for the moment so that you can calm down, relax. You drink it in moderation. And then when, you, when, you, when you're when done, you wake up the next day, now you go and gather a plan to fix those various situations. Because the alcohol is not going to give us, it's not going to give you, a, the alcohol is a, a temporary uh, fix to get your mind off of it for the moment so that you can relax calm down you don't you don't you, you get rid of those stresses for for that moment but you still have to deal with the problem you have to you have to deal with it you can't use wine or strong drink to make the problems hide and sweep them under the rug because that's not the problem's not going to go away you still have to find uh con, con, uh what's the constructive ways to actually deal with the problems and strong drink is not going to do that so if you have a problem if you if you if you're a person that you run to alcohol, you run to wine, you run to drink to try to hide your problems. You need maybe you need to stop drinking overall because you have that means you have an alcohol problem where you because you you depending you you're putting the alcohol in the place of the most high God and you're trusting in the alcohol to sol- solve your problems when alcohol is not gonna solve your problems. I'm jumping ahead of yourself, I'm going into the bad. I'm trying to point out right now, we're focusing on the the good things. Of wine because wine will it makes you merry. It make you forget about the things that been that may have gone on throughout the week. Um, you got a cut off notice from the from the light bill or whatever. It may it, for temporary it ease your mind from that. But read on, verse seven. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. So when you drink, it make you merry. It make you forget those things. You take your mind off of it. But it's not a permanent fix. It's only temporary. And we all have to keep that in mind. Like I said, if you don't have control over drinking, over your drinking, don't drink. You have to, you, you have to cut, you will have to, we're going to go over it a little bit more later, but you have to cut it off. If you have a problem where you always run into alcohol, run into the bottle to, to hide your problems, and that's what, that's what goes on a lot in the black community. A lot of times, there's brothers that turn into winos and, and drunkards and things like that. They turn to alcohol and they become alcoholics because they're trying to run away from their problems. And, but the problems are not going to go away. The problems are not going to go away because you got drunk and you forgot about it. The problems still had to be dealt with. So if you, if you are facing, if, if that's a, a, a stumbling block for you, the best thing for you to do is stop drinking completely. Either, either indefinitely and never drink again, or you stop drinking for a dispensation of time till you get things in check and you get your spirit in check to where you can drink um, responsibly, as they say. Where you're able to be, have show forth discipline like, okay, I know after two drinks, I start feeling a little woozy. You know what? I'm going to drink one and a half, so I don't even get to that point. I don't even feel it. But you got to deaden the, the if you're a drunker, if you if you were alcoholic or wino and you just drink too much, the best thing for you to do is complete stop indefinitely and don't mess with the drink at all. Reduce your, if you drink strong drink, if you run a strong drink and you always drinking strong drink, maybe you need to go get you some, uh, some, uh, some easy wine and drink you a glass once a week. Drop down to that much so that way you you deaden that desire and that that uh, that desire for the strong drink to try to solve your problems. Depending on how bad it is, you might have to completely completely cut it out. Period. Well, even if like if you live in a household with somebody else that may that may drink that may they may drink but they don't have an issue with it. But if you live in a house with them, you may have to talk to them like, hey, it's best that I don't have that in my in my uh, presence at all so i can overcome this spirit uh but that was verse seven right that was verse uh yes correct so let's go to ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 19 i jumped ahead of myself a little bit it's the book of ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 19 a feast is made for laughter Uh uh-huh and wine maketh merry 
But money answers all things. So we're dealing with that good of alcohol. Sometimes with the wine, strong drink, it make you merry. When it's drunk in moderation, that's the good part of it. It'll take you, it'll take your mind temporarily off those things, the stressors, the, the various things that we go through in this captivity. We always always something. Whether you like I said, if you drive, if you're in a big city, you gotta worry about somebody cutting you off. You driving the speed limit, somebody's fat pass you, give you the finger. All of those various things are stresses. And you get home, you drink a you drink drink a glass of wine, it eases your mind a little bit. It, it it relaxes your relaxes your mind. So from there, we're gonna go into the bad side of drinking, of going through the of uh, of alcohol, of spirits. Go back to Sirach chapter 31 and read 29. The book of Sirach chapter 31 and verse 29. But wine drunken with the excess maketh bitterness of the mind. So now it says, now we're on the flip side. It says dry, wine drunken in excess maketh bitterness of the mind. What is that? You drunk so much that you blacked out and you just woke up the next day on the floor in the middle of the living room. And you wake up like, whoa, what I do? What happened? And now you're getting called. Hey, man, you was tripping. That's the bitterness of the soul because now you, you, you blacked that you drunk so much that you blacked out and you don't even know what happened. You don't know if you did something stupid. You don't know if you, you don't know what you did. Those are the things that go on in our community because we grow up without guidance. We grow up without knowledge of the scriptures. And a lot of times that's how we live. A lot of our people, we drink to get drunk. We drink for the thrill. That's wine drunkenness in excess. You mess around and we drink and get black out and wake up in a damn jail cell. Wake up in a holding cell because you 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 were so drunk that you was belligerent. You you got pulled over. You was belligerent with the police. Now they had to put you in cuffs and take you in. Whether you was a if you was a driver, now you got a DUI. That's that's what it, that bitterness of the soul. It makes things worse for you. You may be a person or a, a brother or sister. That has a good name, got good works, and then you 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 were stressing or whatever, and you drunk too much, and then you did something stupid, and now you scarred your whole name. Read with brawling and quarrel, quarreling. A lot of times when somebody gets drunk, you get you lose discretion. They they call they call alcohol liquid confidence or a truth serum. So what that means is you get too you get drunk. You lose all discretion. Anything, everything that comes to your mind, you're going to do it. Whereas, whereas when you're in your right mind, somebody may do something, but you're going to think about it before you act. You're going to be like, you know what? That ain't, you're going, you're going, if, you're in, if you're in the spirit, your mind is going to go to the scriptures like, you know what? I ain't going to think evil of my brother or sister. You know what? Maybe he ain't mean that. Maybe she didn't mean it. But if you're drunk, you drink too much, man, I can't believe he just bumped into me. Man, what's wrong with you? And you, you get you get belligerent and you start doing something stupid. That's why I say we're brawling and quarreling because that's what you're going to do. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna automatically, somebody bump you, whereas if you were sober, somebody bumped you, you might get mad, but you'd be able to catch yourself. You know, like, you know what? He may, maybe he didn't mean that. But if you're drunk, you're doing the first thing to come to your mind. You're going to act on it. And now you now you're in a tussle. You're in a fight. Read. Read it. Say that. Say that on the mic. I don't think you're going to make it up here. Test, test. No, I was just saying the Bible calls it perverting judgment. Like the officer was going over, a lot of times you lose discretion when you over drink. It takes away from that level. That takes, that takes away from your head being level. It's called, the Bible calls it, um, uh, what did I just, the Bible called it. Uh, perverting judgment. Right, perverting judgment. That was it. And that's, that's what it is. Read on. Verse 30. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool till he offend. So it says drunkenness increases the rage of a fool. So this the fool is a brother or sister that don't have a some fool is somebody that ain't got no regard for God's commandments, no regard for God's laws. So a fool, they get drunk and they just ready, they just going to start fights, pick fights, want to fight everybody, arguing. And they get to the point where they blacked out, and like I said, they wake up and don't even know what happened. Wake up and regret. Read. It diminishes strength and maketh wounds. It diminishes strength and maketh wounds. A, a drunk person, they think that they they like well if they do get, they get to that point they do get in the fight. 
they think that they hit somebody with a uh, knockout blow, and it really wasn't a knockout blow. They hit him, and it was like, "What's wrong with this guy?" And the, and then and they get knocked out. That's what that's what drunkenness does to you. It says it diminishes strength. You don't you know you're not in your full strength when you actually get drunk. That's why you not. That's why I said you're supposed to do it in moderation. You're supposed to do it in moderation. Jump up to verse twenty five. Uh, verse twenty five. Show not thy valiantness in wine. It says show not thy valiantness in wine. What a, a lot of things would happen in the streets when brothers grew. Man, I could drink you under the table. Man, I could drink. Man, I, drink I got a long guy. I, man, I could drink. I could. I would drink you. Head. Let's go get a fifth. Let's go get this. Let's go get that. And now it's a drinking battle. And end up at the end of the night, both of y'all done blacked out and woke up and did something stupid. Woke up, y'all done went to a club. You done went to a club, you got drunk, you drunk too much, you had too much to drink, and you wake up, your head swole because you got jumped. Your head swole, you got glass in your head, a swollen eye, all of that. And it's like, man, what happened? Lo and behold, you don't realize you just, you got drunk, you went somewhere you shouldn't have been anyway. You was talking stuff. You got into it with the wrong people. And now you, you came out with a swole head. And now you in pain. Or worse, you might wake up in the hospital. That's because you, 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 you showed your violent, valiantness in wine. Read. But wine have destroyed many. Wine have destroyed many. Wine will cause you to do stupid things that you regret. Because the wine, like they call it, liquid confidence. You used to wear first you would you would have some level of discretion with things that come to your mind. You wouldn't do everything. You wouldn't do the first thing that come to mind. But when you get drunk and you get that liquor in your system and you pass the point of tipsy where you you lose logic, you just do whatever come to your mind. And that's where it says wine have destroyed many. It destroys you. It destroys your name, your 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 reputation. Now your reputation is bad. They know you as that drunk or that wine o. Read. This is verse. 26, the furnace proveth the edge of by dipping. Uh-huh. So it says the furnace proveth the edge by dipping. If you got a furnace that's burning 2,000 degrees, you put a piece of metal in there, that metal will turn red real quick when it start melting. So that's why it says the furnace proveth the edge by dipping. Which Whatever you put into a real hot furnace, it's going to burn it. Read. So doth wine hearts of the proud by drunkenness. So if you drink, so... If you drink wine, you drink strong drink, you drink too much, it's going to prove you. It's going to show the real you. The real you is going to come out. The you that you ate, that normally you would be able to restrain, have some level of restraint, not doing everything that come to your mind. But when you get drunk, that's why they call it spirits. It puts spirits on you. And now you're doing stupid stuff. You're doing everything that come to your mind. You have no logic. You're acting like a child. Um, that's it. Uh, go to Proverbs twenty and verse one. Because of the bad thing about wine and alcohol, if you drink it, if you overdrink, you drink too much, you end up doing stupid things that you re you will regret later in life. You would do stupid things, fighting, getting in fights. Um, you you would do you would do things. You do sexual things. You say things that you're not supposed to say out in the open. Let's say you have, let's say you 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 a married brother or sister, you or you got a close friend, and you have a gripe. You might have a gripe with your brother or sister or your your wife or your husband, and then you go out and get drunk. And because of that gripe is on your mind, you would drink and get drunk, and then now you bad mouthing. Your your wife or your you you're putting you airing out business that shouldn't everybody shouldn't know because you didn't got drunk. Now you shamed yourself. Read that Proverbs twenty, the book of Proverbs chapter twenty and verse one. Wine is a mocker. Strong. Wine is a mocker. That's what happens. You 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 start saying stuff you shouldn't have said. You said doing things you shouldn't have do. That wine is mocking you. You're now you're a laughing stock. You're a mocking stock. Everybody's mocking you now because you done drunk too much. Now you're doing stupid things. Read. Strong drink is raging. Uh-huh. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. It says whoever is deceived thereby is not wise. That goes back to that show in uh back in when we read in Sirach 31 and 25, where it says, show not thy valiantness in wine. Read that last part again. What we just read. 
and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. It says whoever is deceived thereby is not wise. That's you, man. I could, I could drink, man. I could drink you under the table. No, nah, you deceive because when you drink somebody under the table, what happened? You gonna be under the table. You are gonna be under the table. You are gonna wake up. Uh, what's what's that stuff that it needs old? You had uh, what's that? Uh, what that steel reserve two eleven drinks like that. St. Ives, uh, Cisco, you drink stuff like that and you wake up and, and, and it, 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 you, you out of your mind. You done did something stupid and now you wake up and you're shamed. Don't forget Four Loco. You said Four Logo? Four Loco. Y'all remember Four that? Four Loco? No, I ain't never heard of that. They drink that today. Yeah, I ain't oh. never heard of that. But either way, you're drinking these drinks and you, it ain't right. It don't end good for you. It wine mocks you. Wine makes you a mocker. It, it makes you, it puts you in a state of mind where now you get mocked. Man, man, he black man, he drunk so much, he blacked out. I mean, you see, you remember this crazy stuff? Then you wake up, they talking, you being talked about. That's the things that happen. That's the bad side of drinking. Too much over drinking. Uh, go to Isaiah 5 and 11. Because you you have, that's why it's called spirits. If you drink too much, you're going to have spirits on you. You're going to do all type. Of, if you a brother that struggle with uh, being angry, when you get drunk, what you think you're going to do? You're going to be angry with everybody. You're going to be cursing everybody out. You're going to be shaming yourself. If you a brother that deal with lust. But now when I say, I'm going to be more specific. You a, you a brother that deal with fornication. What you think you're going to do when you get drunk? You're going to be going to try to put your... Your rod and everything that's moving. Because that's what's going to come out. You're dead. That's why it says wine, strong drink is a mocker. It say I'm mixing, I'm mixing the scriptures up. But when you, uh, what does it say? When Proverbs, we just read, it says you would be deceived. You think you got control over those certain spirits. And this is what you, you are that's in the truth. You think you got control over certain spirits. And then you do you be, you be a dummy. Be like, you know what? I could drink. I could drink five cups. And you drink five cups, now you're drunk. Now you're going to act out on those lusts that you have because your mind, you're out of your mind. You, have, you no longer have those barriers to control your thoughts, to control your actions because you don't you let them spirits take over. Uh, read that in Isaiah 5. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 11. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink. So this now says woe unto them. Woe is destruction. Woe means destruction. It says destruction unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink. Meaning when you wake up in the morning, you're not thinking about reading the four chapters. You're not thinking about getting your spirit right. You're thinking about strong drink. You went to sleep drinking. And this, did we finish the first read that? Finish the, I'm going finish it. That yeah. continue until night. To wine inflame them. So it says, woe unto them that rise. The key thing that you want out of this scripture is woe unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink that continue until night. That means you drink all day and all night. This is not talking about, uh, let's say it's a, it's a feast day. It's a new moon. You wake up and you have a beer and that's it. Or you have a, a glass of wine. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the brother or sister that drink all day and all night. That's that's you, you you drink up in the morning with a hangover and you get another glass to get rid of the hangover. That's what that's talking about. You just drink. You're a wino. You're an alcoholic. That's what the scripture is going into. That's why it says that they may continue until night, until wine inflamed them. What's that inflamed them? Now you're the wine, the spirits have taken over. It's no longer. Well, I ain't gonna say it's no, it's no longer you, but the spirits then took over. You got a lustful spirit. You got a spirit that you love to steal. You covetous. That's what's gonna come out. Your 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 lust is gonna be inflamed. It's gonna be magnified because now you you know the faculties of your mind that that control that you have a, a little bit of self control. You have a little bit of discretion where you don't think about what you do before you do it. They know it's no longer there. Them barriers are gone because the spirits that took over. The spirits took over because you done drunk too much. And now you're just doing all type of foolishness and all type of foolish things. Read. Verse 12. And the, continue, okay. And the harp and the vol and the tabret and pipe and wine are in their feasts. 
but they regard not the work of the Lord. So that means all you think about is wine. It's really an idol to you because you, your, your, your thought process is not, oh, I'm going to serve the Lord God with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. No, it's I'm going to serve this alcohol. I'm going to serve this bottle with all my might. This, this bottle is going to take away all my pain because when I'm drunk, I don't remember the, I don't remember my problem. I don't remember that bill that's due tomorrow. I don't remember that I got to go and deal with my, uh, my, my evil boss. You think that wine is going to solve all your problems and it's not. Read on. Did we finish that verse? No. Neither Read. consider the operation of his hands. So it says that, that those that, that, that seek after strong drink to that capacity, it says, um, it says they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hands. They don't consider that the Bible is the book of life. The Bible is what got the solutions to fix the problems that you got. It's the Bible that's going to be able to, let's say you deal with, you may, you may deal, you may have dealt with the death in the family. That's a, that's a uh, thing that would that take you into a state of mourning, but the bottle is not going to solve the problems. You might have a glass of wine to try to ease your mind, but if you, if you seek to the, you lost, let's say you lost your mother and now you didn't turn to alcohol because you don't, you, you was, you was real close to your mother and it, it caused, uh, it caused you great pain. So now you turn to the bottle as the solution to your problem when actually the bottle ain't doing nothing but sweeping it under the rug. The problem is still there. You have to heal. The, the alcohol is not going to give you the healing that you need. So you have to understand that you got to put the bottle to the side. Ain't nothing wrong with a glass here, a glass there. But when you go to that drink, you go to that strong drink to actually be like it's a solution to your problems. You find yourself, that's why most, that's why a lot of people, that's where winos and drunkards are birthed. Because they, when they drink, they forget about, like we read in Proverbs 31, they forget, when you drink and you get married, you forget about your problems. So what they turn to, because once you, once that, um, once you sober up, you, now the problem is back there. You, you got to deal with the problem. But if you don't want to deal with the problem, you turn to the drink. And that now that drink has become your God. Because now you everything you like, okay, when I drink, I don't remember my problems. So you know what? I'm just gonna drink. That's not the solution. You're killing yourself slowly. You're destroying your spirit. You're destroying your brain. I wish I had got more articles, but when you drink and when you drink excessively excessively like that, it destroys your brain cells. Just like those that decide they want to smoke weed. It destroys, it kills your brain cells. It's destroying your body. Uh, jump up to verse 22. Verse 22. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine. So it says, woe unto them, destruction unto them that are mighty to drink wine. That's going right back to that, show not thy valiantness in wine. Woe unto them. So destruction unto them, unto them that's mighty to drink wine. That's, talk, that's walking around talking about how they can drink somebody under the table. Read. And men of strength to mingle strong drink. It says men of strength to mingle strong drink. You the brother that's always want to, one, on one cup, you got, you, got some, uh, you got some dark liquor. Then you got some light liquor. Then you got some tequila. Then you got some Long Island. You got, about a, you got a couple of Ike Long Island iced teas. Oh, this tastes good. This ain't nothing. I throw that back. It ain't nothing. You getting the, the what some of these, and these, some of these drinks are older. And depending on where you're from, you may you may be familiar. You got the Thug Passion, the Gin and Juice, Tequila Sunrise, uh, the Blue MFA, uh, the Incredible Hulk. All these various things you mingled, you mixed drinks to to uh, what what is it called? To enhance your drinking experience, to en enhance the taste, whatever the case may be. But that's a problem. That shows that you have an alcohol problem. Um, uh, pull up that article. Put up that article. Um, and we're going to read just the title and then the, uh, the 10 signs. 10 signs someone you know may be a alcoholic. So okay. go down to the 10, the 10 things. Right there, I see it. Stop right there. Number one, their entire social life revolves around alcohol. They're enthusiastic about events where alcohol will be available and tend to avoid ones that do not. Every social function or celebration has to involve alcohol. This their brother says no matter what is going on, if it ain't no alcohol there, y'all ain't got no drink. Man, I ain't coming out there. Man, you, you ain't going to say, we ain't gonna, I can't drink there? Nah. 
Now I'm gonna find something else to do. I just stay at home by myself so I could drink. That's the that's what that's going. That's what that's talking about. It said the entire social life revolves around alcohol. Alcohol is they got. Go ahead. Number two, they drink to relieve stress. If they're having a bad day, they're down the minutes until they can get relief from a drink. I mean, every single day you're drinking. You go to work. Drinking. You go to work. As soon as you get off work, you write to the. As soon as you get off work, you write to the liquor store and you drink. You get home, you drink about two, three drinks. You're drinking your stresses away instead of finding out the solutions to deal with the stressors. You actually drinking all the time. Like I said, it's, it's what the Bible said: uh, wine drunken in moderation. You could drink in moderation. As long as you're not drinking, but if, if if your only solution to, to to relieve the stress is just drinking, you have a problem. You 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 had you you had you get into it with your wife, or you 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 not you at odds with your wife, and you go drink. You have a drinking problem. Every day you you drinking, you drinking, you drinking, and you neglecting your responsibilities, you have a drinking problem. Because if it's it's it, it ain't nothing wrong with if you drink a let's say you drink a glass of wine a day. But if you're drinking that glass of wine and ignoring, you're not getting the right uh solutions to your problems, then you have a drinking problem. You think that that you think that, that alcohol is gonna solve your problems. When all it is all it's doing is taking your mind off of it when you get tipsy, you get drunk, making you merry, and then once you once that once you sober up, that's gone. You have to that mean you 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 cannot rely on alcohol to solve your problems because it's not. Go ahead, read. Number three, they get defensive about their drinking. Read that part again. They get defensive about their drinking. Read. If someone suggests they should cut back or stop, they grow resentful, even angry. They make excuses for why they drink or point to peers who drink just as much as examples of how they couldn't possibly have a problem. That's a sign that you have a drinking problem. If you if somebody's showing you or pointing out to you that they think you should have a drinking problem and all you could do is point the finger at them, point the finger at what somebody else is doing, or you get defensive about it, you you say things like, man, I can stop if I want to, that shows that you have a drinking problem. That shows that you have a drinking problem and you're in denial. The first step to you getting better is actually admitting to it. Like, you know what? I do, I do, because I, you know what I'm saying? I, I rely on drinks to, to solve this problem, solve that problem. That shows that you have a drink problem, drinking problem. Uh, go ahead. Number four, they have a high tolerance. They can put away several beers, drinks, or shots, and show no overt sign of being drunk. And people often talk about how they can hold their liquor. That's a sign that you drink too much because you have your body has built up a tolerance to be able to handle a certain amount of alcohol before you start feeling tipsy or you start feeling drunk. That means you drink too much because our bodies... You about to say something? Yeah, that's dangerous. That's very dangerous. If your body, our bodies are designed um, from the most high to when there's an issue, there's a problem. Say, for instance, there's a stove. I touch the stove. The stove hot. I know that the stove is hot and it's going to do damage to me. And my automatic instinct is to take my hand off so I don't incur any further damage. Right? By nature, we are designed like that. That liquor... Once you feel that you have reached a point to where now you're no longer sober, you should stop. But if you can't feel that you're no longer sober, you're doing a lot of damage because your body is designed for you to stop. Like, okay, we had a limit. But if you can't feel that limit, you're creating damage, irreversible damage. I think you got some information concerning that, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So. You're creating irreversible damage by increasing your liquor tolerance. Right? You're not supposed to be able to tolerate high and high and high amounts of liquor. You got a tolerance so that you can tell yourself to stop. Right. Right? That's a fail safe. That's it. Yeah. And then what happens could be, and that's what happens when when you do, when you like that, when you get to the point where you know what I want to stop, that's when you start having the headaches. You start having withdrawal because your body has adjusted. Your body adjusted to you. So let's say you drink, you drink every day. Every day off the, when you get off work, you're drinking four or five drinks a, 
a night and you're getting drunk, your body is going to be like, okay, this is normal. So your body's going to adjust, and that's where now you're going to drink four or five drinks, and you're not going to feel drunk because your body has built up a tolerance for it. So then it's like, okay, four or five drinks, I ain't drunk. Oh, I could drink some more. Now you drink more, and you get drunk at 10 drinks. Now at 10 drinks, your body like, okay, wait a minute. I got to adjust again because our bodies are, that's how our bodies are. That's how the most high designed our bodies. Our bodies adjust and adapt to the, the various environments. So when you do that to your body, that's unnatural. It's unnormal. So your, even though your body adjusts to it and you have a higher tolerance, you, you're killing your body. You're destroying your body. So that's why when you stop, now you have to, you got to do, you have to, uh, take medications or you got to take certain things so your body can normalize. Or some, if you take a med certain medications, and I'm not going to go down too deep into that, but if you take certain medications, they don't heal your body. They actually don't fix the problem. They, they a, a, a pill or a, a certain medications will, um, what's the, what's the, uh, word, uh, suppress or suppress. It's going to suppress that um uh, that crave the earth it's gonna suppress the crave but it's not gonna heal your body it's gonna suppress the crave but it's not gonna heal your body and it might actually cause more damage so it's best to just not drink and not get to that point where you have that of course we know that the the, the ultimate solution is the scriptures but let's go back to that article number six they drink in the mornings or excessively at lunch or at other periods of the day when other people do not. They often take steps to hide this fact, such as excessive teeth brushing or mouthwash consumption. Now, that, that excessive teeth brushing or mouthwash consumption is to try to hide the, the, the scent of alcohol on their breath. When you can't, you, that don't work because when you drink like that, it seeps through your pores. It's, it's going through your bloodstream. So you can't hide it, but these are the things. And that's what we just read in Isaiah chapter 5. That's when the wine inflame you. Uh, read. Number seven, they don't know when to quit, even if they set, set a limit. I'm only going to have three drinks tonight, they seldom, if ever, adhere to their own boundaries, and they push to keep the party going, even after everyone else is ready to call it a night. You have, them spirits have took over. You say, um, you know what, I'm going to drink three. Then at three, man, I feel too good. I need another one. That's them spirits taking over. You have, you have lost control. Read. Number eight. They, they're suffering consequences from overindulgence. DUI arrests, job losses, failures in school. They may not even see the correlation between their drinking and their consequences. Instead, blaming others. Overbearing bosses. Zealous cops or obstructive professors, obtrusive professors, for the problems their drinking has caused. That's that wine is a mocker, and strong drink is a brawler. Now you you didn't you didn't destroy yourself because you got you got arrested because you drinking under the influence. You lost your job because you you can't stop drinking. You wake up in the morning and drink. You have a, had you a shot before you go to work, and you just you went to bed drinking, and now you lose your job. You fell out of school. That's that wine is a mocker. Go ahead. Number nine, they make rash decisions while under the influence, insisting they're okay to drive or leaving the bar with a complete stranger or often or other actions that sober judgment will prevent them from undertaking. That's what we were talking about earlier. You lose discretion when you get drunk. You lose that level of discretion, that level of thoughtfulness. Like, you know what? I, maybe I shouldn't do this. That don't seem wise. You know what? I don't feel right about this. But when you get drunk, all that's out the window. Read. Number 10. They show physical and emotional symptoms of alcohol withdrawal. Trembling hands, profuse sweating, extreme irritability, and other hallmarks of acute alcohol detoxification, all of which are usually rectified by a drink. And that's what, that's what we was talking about. Your body has adjusted to being... So your, your body has normalized the amount of alcohol that you have become accustomed to drinking. So now when your body don't have it, you start trembling. You have trembling hands. You start sweating. You get, you get extreme irritable. That's your body. That's your, the, the, uh, 
what's the word, the chemical, is that the, the chemical imbalance, the chemical imbalance that you've created in your body, now that's how you're going to be acting. Whereas if you, when you're under a normal, under, under normal circumstances, your body in good health, if your blood pressure rises, then these are the things that will happen because now it's, that's, un, that's not normal for your body. But now you have made alcohol like it's blood that pumped through your veins and your body, when it don't get it, now your body is, is, is hand shaking. You sweating. You irritable. Somebody say something, get away from me. Don't do that. And they just like, hey, man, I was just, I just called your name. I just tapped you on the soda. All of those things are signs of, that you have an alcohol problem. Uh, pull up that video. We're going to watch these two videos, and then we're going to go into some, the solutions, some of the solutions. Four different signs of high-functioning alcoholism. And make sure you stay until the end because I'll also be sharing with you steps that you can take towards sobriety. My name so, is Emmanuel. With so just, just, just listen to what he's listen to what he's saying. You know, health, I, know I know the voice saying substance abuse education. The voice don't facilities. We offer treatment the options. Voice don't match the person speaking, but, but just listen to what's what's being said. More about how we can help at the end. Let's get into the video. Now, in order to understand high functioning alcoholism, we first had to talk about how alcohol is extremely normalized. So real quick, in society. And uh, pause it real quick. Grabbing a drink with a friend. So just in, in, in lamer terms to so what we would, how we would uh, understand this, he said a high, what do you say, high functioning alcoholism? That's a functioning, what we call it, a functioning alcohol, a functional alcoholic where somebody could be drunk out their mind, but they be at work doing, the, um, if they're on a, if they in a warehouse, if they work at a warehouse, they be on the line. And you wouldn't even tell that they were drunk because they functioning. They able to do the job. They do the job better than somebody that's sober because they have become to, they have, their body has normalized them being drunk. So their body has adjusted. They, they, they don't woke up and drunk 10, drunk down a whole fifth and then go to work and be in the same normal, but you can smell the alcohol off of them. It's the slur is still going to be in their speech, but they able to function. That's a functioning alcoholic. Go ahead, bring the video back up. And buying a six pack for the game this upcoming weekend, or even getting a glass of wine for a romantic dinner, all of these activities with alcohol are seen as normal. Because of this, though, typically, when you think of an alcoholic, you are probably thinking of an extreme case someone who's constantly drunk, life falling apart, drinking 24 7. Even though this may be a common scenario, alcohol dependence and alcohol addiction looks different for everyone. Alcoholism affects more than 14 million adults in the United States alone. So if you struggle with this substance abuse disorder, you are not alone. And there is support out there that's ready to help. Now with this understanding, let's get into the four signs of high-functioning alcoholism. One, you use alcohol to cope. Alcohol is often used to dull or even sometimes numb the feelings you may be experiencing. So that that's Please showing, know, like we said, that's showing that you have a dependency on the alcohol like as, like as if it's solving your problems. When all actuality is not solving your problem, it's just make you forget about them for that moment while you're drinking. And then, but once you get sober, you remember the problem. The problem comes back up. So what you do to cope with it is keep drinking. You keep drinking. You keep drinking to, so that your mind is off of whatever the problem is. Pull it back up. That coping this way can easily backfire. Choosing alcohol to cope rather than healthier options like journaling or going for a walk, can lead to a further increase in alcohol addiction and increase an in individual's dependency of needing to use alcohol as a way to cope. Two, drinking too much, too often. If you are noticing that each time you drink, it ends in a hangover, or even if you're not drinking at all, you start to notice some withdrawal symptoms, that could mean you have already developed or are starting to develop a dependency on alcohol. Another indicator of this is when an individual sets limits for themselves, but they often don't stick to those limits. In other words, it's hard for them not to overconsume. Three, you consume alcohol for every occasion. Consuming alcohol for special occasions like weddings, birthdays, sporting events, or even vacations are quite normal. The problem is when alcohol has become the center of your life. If you're noticing that you're planning your day around access to alcohol, 
or if you're changing plans to accommodate your drinking need, this is a sign of functional alcoholism. Four, you're using alcohol to relax. With this fourth tip on high functioning alcoholism, having a drink to wind down after a long day for most is not a big deal. And the truth is, it isn't. The problem is, if you are absolutely unable to relax without the need of a drink, and when you do drink to relax, it normally turns into a few. Hey, so few real quick, hey, pause it real down. quick. Well, you know what? Is it almost done? Go ahead, play it out, play it out. This is a sign of a problem. After hearing these four signs, you notice that you may be someone struggling with alcohol yourself. Please understand that acknowledging your alcohol may be a problem is a huge step towards sobriety. It can be frustrating battling an addiction. You might be feeling All right, bad, that's it. sad. So real quick, get Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12, because when you when you when you when you're an alcoholic or you you depend on you have that level of dependency on alcohol, that means you have replaced the most high God with alcohol. Well, everything that you're supposed to get from the most high, now you turn into alcohol to get it. Read that. Deuteronomy 10 and uh, 12. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So it says, what does God require of thee? Really goes back to, it goes to all the commandments, but pertaining to the most high goes to the four, first four commandments. What does God require you? Read. But to fear the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So it says to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. That means when you encounter a problem, you look to the most high for the solutions. When uh, you get into an argument with your wife, well, now I don't want to say argument, but you get into a a dispute or y'all don't see eye to eye something. You have some trouble in the flesh. I use, I say that. That sounds better. You have some trouble in the flesh. You go to the Bible for the solution. But you know you have a, you you have put the alcohol in front of the most high when, when you have those problems. Instead of trying to fix them, you actually go to the bottle. You go to the, the wine. You go to the, 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 uh, the spirits to try to solve your problem. That's the bad side of drinking alcohol when you, when you develop a dependency on it where you forget about the most high, but, and you go, you turn to the bottle over the most high. Uh, pull up that next video. You know what officer though? Go ahead. We just read it right here. It says to, to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And we understand that the heart is the mind, right? So how can you truly serve the Lord your mind if you're drunk? If you think about it, right, you can't. Uh, but that's that's it. All I wanted on that. You know what? I'm gonna skip that other video because it pretty much goes through the same thing. You want to bring something up? Yeah, let me get a scripture real quick. Second Ezra chapter uh, fourteen. Uh, fourteen and fourteen. Uh, because the officer made a heavy point. He said instead of going to the Most High, seeking the Most High to solve your problems. You actually indeed do the weak thing. You do the you do the easy thing. The easy thing is to wipe away your problems and not ever address them the way they need to be addressed. And the only way we're gonna get from point A to point B being a better people is if we seek the 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 treatment that has been given to us, right? Go ahead and read that for me. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 14. Let go from thee mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature. We all going through it. We all seek different ways of coping, right? It's weak and it's an easy thing for you to go ahead and just drink. But what happens when the when you sober up? The problem's still there. So you really, essentially, you did nothing. All you did was you actually put yourself that much closer to death. You understand what I'm saying? You put yourself that much closer to death because you're diminishing your health. You're diminishing your mental state uh, status. You're not considering the work of your hands. I think that was um, um, Isaiah 5. Isaiah 5, you consider not the work of your hands. You're not considering what you're actually doing. You're not considering that you're destroying and making your situation worse by drinking, by ignoring the Most High God instead of seeking him um, for his help. 
That's it. So that 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 segues right into the solution. So the solutions to if you find yourself battling alcoholism, you don't have no control over your alcohol consumption. These are some solutions, and, and it, it, starting with what the officer just brought out, you have to subdue your understanding. You have to uh, control your thought processes. Go to uh, Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. Because what the, the solution that alcohol, you turn to alcohol, and all it does is uh, pacify the problems temporarily. Because it, get, it, get, it gets your mind off of it, but it don't solve the problem. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 26, and verse 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. So when you turn to the bottle, it shows that you don't have trust in the Most High. You don't trust that the Most High is going to be able to give you the solutions. Excuse me. When I say the Most High, I'm talking about the Bible. The Bible is going to give you the solutions. So when you keep your, when it says keep your, uh, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Your mind is stayed on the most high when you go to, when you go to, when you have a, uh, you got a financial problem. You go to the scriptures to find out, okay, how do I solve this financial problem? You got a marital problem. Okay, how do I, let me go to the scriptures and find out how do I solve this problem? You, you got whatever stresses you got whether it's a death in the family, whatever the case may be, whatever pro issues that causes stresses in your mind, you go to the scriptures to find the solution because that's really what's going to give you the peace of mind. That's really what's going to clear your mind of that problem is the scriptures. That's why it says he's going to keep your, keep your, he's going to keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Go to um, Sirach chapter 37 and verse 27. Sirach chapter 37 and verse 27. My son, prove thy soul in thy life and see what is evil for it and give it not that unto it and so, give not that unto it. So you have to examine yourself and you have to prove your soul in this life. You have to know, number one, if you if you are, if you do drink, if you're a brother that drinks, sister that drink, you have to know your limitations and don't drink past your limitations. If you know, okay, I can have two drinks and I'm good. Always drink two drinks. Well, not always. Sorry, I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say that a different way. Because you'll build a tolerance. You'll build a tolerance to two drinks, and then them two drinks don't be no no. You build a tolerance. Okay, if I get two drinks, I feel a little. So you you don't drink more than that. You drink one. Sometimes sometimes two. You don't always drink two. You limit the amount of time that you drink. You drink in moderation. You control it. You have you have to control your consumption. But if you somebody that know, okay, if I start drinking, I'm not going to be able to say no. Maybe you, you just need to stop drinking altogether. You have to know what's evil for you. If you're drinking around brothers and sisters and you have a, 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 a people-pleasing spirit and you know, okay, I ain't going to be able to stop drinking because they still drinking. Maybe it's best for you not to drink or just drink when you're at home. When you're out with the brothers or something, okay, drink a glass of wine and that's it. Or just don't drink when you're with the brothers because you're not going to be able to stop yourself. You have to know yourself. You got to know your limitations and don't even push it. Don't, try, don't test the waters. Read on. Verse 28, for all things are not profitable for all men. So it says all things are not profitable to all men. If another brother is able to drink three drinks and he good, that don't mean I could drink three weeks or you could drink three drinks. Because a lot sometimes the amount that you can drink when you're dealing with alcohol, the amount that you can drink depend, depends on your body mass. Somebody that's heavier and bigger, they may be able to drink a little bit more because they have a hollow, they have a higher body mass. Well, smaller brothers, we ain't able to drink that much. You gotta accept that. You can't be, well, he can drink three. Man, I could drink three too. No, no, you can't. No, you cannot. You got to know you and know your limitations and don't go beyond it. And sometimes if you sometimes you have to um, sometimes you have to you have to completely 
To some people, you got to stop. Like I said earlier, some people, you just got to stop drinking indefinitely and don't drink at all. Some people, you have to stop drinking. Let's say it's a dispensation of six months. You stop drinking for six months and then you reintroduce drinking where you drink a glass of wine here and there. And then you might you might drink a shot or some strong drink here and there. But you never go beyond that because you know, you know yourself. You know if you drink too much, you might backslide and go back into that over drinking. You got to know your own spirit. If you, have, if you know that you have a, an addictive personality, it might be best for you to just leave it alone, period. Because you might easily fall back into that addiction. You got to know your spirit. Uh, go to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. I finished that on... Uh, no, I didn't. I uh, finished that in uh, Sirach 28. I'm neither. 37. Okay. 37 and right. 28. Right. Neither have every soul pleasure in everything. Uh-huh. That's so, so now go to Ephesians 5 and 18. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. These are some solutions. And of course, there's a whole lot more that we can go through. But these are some basic solutions that you can utilize to 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 come out of that um to come out of that spirit. Read this is the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. And be not drunk with wine. It says be not drunk with wine meaning you over drink, you drink beyond your limits. Read wherein is excess. Uh-huh. But be filled with the spirit. But be what? Filled with the spirit. That's you keeping your mind on the most high. You're keeping your mind on the most high in his word. You feel with the spirit. Like the scripture says, says in Galatians, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right. If you're a person that's given to getting drunk, that's a work of the flesh. You drink, you're doing what's contrary. You're sinning against the most high. So be filled with the spirit. You have to go to the scriptures for the solutions to your problems. Uh, go to, this is the last scripture. Go to Joshua chapter one and verse eight. Because the thing is, the way we overcome the, the various uh, issues and problems that we have in life, the, the, the solutions are in the Bible. That's why it's called the book of life. It shows us what to do and what not to do to have an a, a, a enduring life. Uh, read that. The book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So it's a what? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. No, nah, the, the bottle shall not depart out of your hand. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So it says, the Bible says, the book, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. It said mouth, right? Yes. It says shall not depart out of thy mouth. If you find yourself always going to the bottle, you got it twisted. You're doing the wrong thing. You're following the wrong path. It says this book of the law, this, read it again. I'm butchering it. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, Uh huh. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. So you meditate in the Bible day and night, not wake up to seek strong drink and then drink all day until wine inflame you. Mm. No, you get, you get filled with the spirit by meditating on the scriptures day and night. Read that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Uh huh. For then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Meaning that when you, when you do this, you meditate in the scriptures day and night, you're going to have good success. Why? Because now you're going to be able, you're going to have the right solutions to your problems. If you got an issue, you got trouble in the flesh, you're going to be, the Bible is going to tell you how to resolve the issues. Whether you got, a, you, a, a, what a, you got issues with your brother, you got issues at your job, the Bible is going to give you the solutions that you need to apply to be able to solve the problem, to solve those stressors, to get your, your finances in order, to get your bills under check, all of that. You ha it's the Bible. Ain't nothing else going ain't nothing else going to solve the problem. Anything else, we talking about alcohol. Alcohol is just going to be a temporary, and it's not even going to be a temporary fix. It's going to be a temporary get your mind off of it for the moment that you been that you drunk. But once you once you sober up, the problem's still there. The problem ain't going nowhere. So you have to go, you have to turn to the scriptures to actually solve the problems. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is you 
Nation.